Hi you guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me, I'm Jill and I am a homeschool mom to a nine-year-old girl in the fourth grade. And today I wanna to talk about tutoring because I actually haven't covered it. I've done three videos already in, for French or foreign languages or how to start in your homeschool. I haven't broached tutoring for a reason. And so I'll explain that. But I think it's important to mention as um, a valid means of learning a foreign language, of giving a foreign language to your child, and of using it as augmentation to teaching your own child. And I realize I have a fourth grader, you may have someone younger, or you may have someone much older. So today's video will run the gamut between the young kids all the way into high school options and then beyond as career options and post high school studies. So why do I wanna bring it up now? Or more importantly, why didn't I bring it up before? Because I think if you're homeschooling, you also want to teach your kid and perhaps starting the foreign language with you and your child, getting them a less expensive option with you teaching them with some books to start off will set you up for success. I also think that it's hard to have successful tutoring, especially with children, with the parent guiding if the parent doesn't know their why and give expectations to the tutor. do Why are you doing the language? At what point do you wanna check in? Are we where we're supposed to be? Do you have short-term, mid-term, long-term goals that you want to express to the tutor? Because I, I guarantee you, the way you start out language is as important as the, as the trip through it. You, you've gotta start out on a good, healthy, positive foot with your kid and how better to do that than with you. I'm finding now it's the perfect time to integrate a tutor. Morgan is comfortable with French. She thinks it's neat. She can build sentences. She knows some vocabulary and she knows some verbs. And so before she kind of gets solidified with the way I teach, now I want, while I have that base with her, now I want to invite a tutor in, a foreign national, a French speaker, with the perfect accent, with teaching experience, with teaching experience with young kids. I mean, it, it just really runs the gamut too. If you're looking for a tutor and you've got a high school kid, then you will have different requirements, I think. But write them down and relay them to the tutor. Because I will tell you, especially as somebody who has provided instruction before, it's really helpful to know the other person's goals before you go in there. You, the, they will potentially build a program around your kid, your expe expectations and your goals. If it's kind of like when you go to a realtor and you tell them you're looking for a house and you give them the budget, but you don't tell them what you're looking for. And so if you don't say you want a really big backyard and you end up in the city on the 15th floor looking at a condo, you have not relayed your expectations to the realtor and, and they've only given you what you can afford, not necessarily the details of what you want. And so when you choose a tutor, kind of go in that way with the mindset of you are controlling it. You do want certain things that you're paying for. Uh, and then from there, find one where you feel like you can take a back seat and then they can guide and help augment what you are already teaching. So for instance, Morgan's gonna start, her first tutoring is next Monday for a half an hour. And timing is kind of important too. Not only like during the during the day, but also the how long the class is. And then whatever her tutor gives her, instead of me adding on to that, according to what I was going to give her, I will complement what she's been given by the tutor. So it really is going to be a group effort. And I've relayed to the tutor what I want, that, that my goal is for Morgan to take the DELF eventually, that I want her to, to be A1 and then A2 and then ultimately at, at least a B1. Um, we all have our goals. It, it could just be that you want your child to speak at a certain level or do a certain thing with it. But as somebody who's used foreign languages in their career and gotten paid as part of the reason why I got the job, I had languages, um, going in understanding expectations is really important and being able to relay, hey, I need to learn this because <laughs> I'm getting paid by my employer to do this. And so 
uh, for, I don't want to learn how to say apples, oranges, and peaches. I want to learn how to say um, business terminology, for instance. Now, if you have a little, you're going to learn different things. But if you have a teenager, especially if you have a teenager who's looking at using this as a career move, then uh, relaying that to the tutor to kind of cater the direction of the language can be incredibly helpful. Middlebury, for instance, um, the college, their, their summer intensive immersive program at Middlebury in Vermont does this really, 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 really well. In fact, the only other location for an older child to have that option would be, I think, in the United States, the only other thing is the Defense Language Institute in Monterey, California. Now, each one of those options <laughs> comes with a price tag. One is very expensive and one takes your time. And I mean that DLI, if you don't know the Defense Language Institute, you need to be a member of the armed forces. And so you need to be in the Army, Navy, Air Force, or Marines, um, and predominantly enlisted. There are hardly any officers that go through that course. So that's going to take your time. It's going to pay you, though. Now, Middlebury is very expensive, and it's short and immersive. So, for instance, if you have a child who's uh, an older child who's interested in foreign languages, it could be uh, between your, for instance, your freshman year of college and your sophomore year, you may go to a summer at Middlebury and you will come out several levels above where you were before you went in 12, 13 weeks earlier. So it's kind of, there's different options and I know I've kind of bounced around between tutor and then older options, but I'm kind of, I've been spitballing this and I've been kind of thinking, well, what are people interested in? For instance, if you have an older kid who also is interested in um, serving in the Army, Navy, Air Force, or Marines, that may be an option to go into DLI. And I haven't been to Middlebury. I've had friends who have gone and they have loved it and they are proficient in the language they chose. I went the other route. I went through the Defense Language Institute. So if anybody is interested in specifically understanding about that and have any questions, then please give me your questions in the comments because if I do a video on that, I would rather answer exactly your questions and help cater that video specifically to you and uh, the needs of your particular child. So to get back to tutoring, I thought Morgan was going to be kind of shy when I offered tutoring. And I explained that it, in this case, it would be one-on-one. -on -one. Tutoring can come in different options, actually four that I can think of right off the bat, one-on-one, -on -one, online, or in-person. And the online would be one-on-one -on -one, or it would be small group. And then same with in-person, it would be one-on-one -on -one or in small group. And in my case with Morgan, because I want something very specific for her right now, I'm choosing one-on-one. -on -one. Now, some people will spend money on sports and some people will spend money on horseback riding and extracurricular activities for their children. Uh, this cost is about what I had been paying for in gymnastics for Morgan. And we all like to spend money in different ways. And so this is just what I've chosen to do. And I don't think that it's cost prohibitive. There are different programs that are, however. So for instance, I think Berlitz is the ultimate gold standard of one-on-one -on -one instruction. It can be incredibly expensive and, and very effective. And when I worked for an employer who, who paid me for languages, they also paid for the education to keep up those languages. And that saved me $10,000. Now, it was one-on-one -on -one for 10 weeks and it was two hours, it was two hours Monday, Wednesday, and Friday after work. And it was exhausting. <laughs> uh, I don't think children should do that. But as an adult, if you're driven and you have a, an end goal that you need to meet at a certain time, then that is absolutely an option. So also finding an employer to pay for that education is a great idea. So in Morgan's situation, we're choosing 30 minutes uh, once a week, which I think is great. I think any longer than 30 minutes for a little kid, one-on-one -on -one with a teacher is exhausting. The reason why it's exhausting is you're always on because that instructor's attention is always on you. And if you're in small groups, then you at least kind of get a mental break for a minute while another student is talking or answering a question. So you do get more for your time. In, I would say, 30 minutes of one-on-one -on -one could be the equivalent of two hours in a small group. 
So keep that in mind. And then also keep your child's preference in mind. If they're particularly shy, but speaking is important for a foreign language, then you may want one-on-one, -on -one, or maybe they're shy and embarrassed, and so maybe you want not one-on-one, -on -one, but maybe in a class with two or three. But the thing is, the people who tutor smaller children are really good at bringing those kids out and talking to them in a way where they are comfortable. And so allow um, the tutor to figure out what kind of temperament your child has because they've done this a whole bunch of times. And having said that, the cost of your tutor is also going to depend on their experience, their location, what, type, what thing you're looking to do with the, with the tutoring in the foreign language. And so those all, everything kind of plays into it. So you kind of have to figure out and kind of look into what you want to do and then do some research, decide what you want to do and do some research behind it. When you do research, uh, look and see what the payment options are. There are some programs that are listed as being pretty good, but some kind of complain that the payment options are strange where you feel locked in and if it doesn't work out, especially if it's one-on-one -on -one tutoring, that can be awkward, uh, and or you could be locked into a payment. And it kind of do it's a litmus it's a litmus test. If you're not comfortable with it, then look for other options because ultimately you and your kid need to be comfortable with it. And also, don't be afraid to, to change tutors. If you're nervous about doing that, about making one-on-one -on -one business transactions with people, then have some if and your spouse is better at that than you then have your spouse do that um if you are if you want to be the one to call and give expectations then go ahead and front load and say i don't know if this is going to work out we may not be comfortable doing tutoring and if it doesn't i want you to be okay with that it's no offense to you so that's a great way to kind of lead in to getting out i i always believe in figuring that <laughs> figuring your way out first before you walk in <laughs> And so in this case, that can really help. You can also say, which is true for us, is I want my kid to have more than one tutor over time so that there's kind of a mix of experience and multiple types of interaction with more than one person. So we will continue this for four months and see how we are or three months and see what, what we're doing and where we are. So that when it comes time to terminate that agreement or arrangement, you can do that feeling good that you have kind of put your best foot forward and also relate to them that that would be coming as well. And that really, a lot of the time, that really is kind of a, a problem that people don't like to um, engage in tutors because of that. So that's just a couple of ideas for how to get through that embarrassing hurdle. So you can kind of see there's more than one option here and more than one way to do things. It's more than just tutoring. There's details to tutoring. I would say write down what you want, what you expect, what your budget is, and do some research and reach out to multiple locations and be clear about, I'm looking for a tutor. I don't know that I will have one yet, but what are you like? What is it like if my child were to tutor with you? And thank you, I'll, I may or may not call back so that you don't feel personally like you've verbally locked yourself into anything. And then write out those pros and cons to find what it is that you want. I was surprised, I thought Morgan, I kind of broached it carefully with Morgan because I thought she might be a little nervous to have a tutor. Uh, this was my mistake because I, I know Morgan's an introvert, but she's not shy. And so uh, she jumped at the chance, especially when she found out that it was one-on-one. -on -one and that I wouldn't necessarily be around. She could just have her own quiet time um, in, in our study here, and I'd be in the dining room. And then she, um, a lot of kids feel kind of weird about talking to someone on the screen, especially when it's a foreign language or something they're not necessarily comfortable with while their parents are lurking over, you know, being a hover hovercraft. And I, I'm not a fan of that. I actually wouldn't want to do that either. Even today, I think I'd want to be one-on-one -on -one quietly with a tutor without everybody else listening or judging. <laughs> so when I broached it with Morgan, she said, yeah, when are we going to do that? What is she like? And I explained and Morgan's totally on board and looking forward to it. Oh, we also have books too. So for instance, we're going to do the 
French. Obviously, we're starting French. And then, uh, which is funny because Morgan's already saying, well, when I, when I get to a certain level with French, can I do Spanish, or not Spanish, Italian? <laughs> you can do anything you want. If you get to a level in French that you feel comfortable with and that you are speaking, yes, we can put a third language on there. But let's get to the second language first. So these are the books that our tutor um, chose. And then I went online and purchased them so they're ready for her and Morgan. Uh, a la une one. And it's for... It's for A1 learners, which is what I want uh, Morgan is going to start with. And so there's where we are. But listen, you guys, I don't want this to be how to um, instruction and you need to do this and you have to, you got to do it this way. I, I would prefer to be the resource that makes you think about options and you can choose any or all of them and make it your own and cater them to yourself and your own kids. And also I kind of think that I use this as a platform to see how me and Morgan grow because there's so few videos out there that over time I would like to share with other people coming up behind me who are thinking of the same thing and haven't done it yet and maybe would like to see what other people are doing and how they're progressing. I don't know how Morgan is going to pro progress in French. I don't know if she's going to hate it next year. I don't think she will, uh, but that's also my responsibility to make sure that she continues to enjoy it. I, I, I have goals in my mind, and ultimately the older Morgan gets, the more, the more she has to have those goals in, in her core and her heart and in her mind and have that direction than mine. So I'm, I am leaving that open for now and giving Morgan an array of options. And so while I do that, I'd like to do that here with giving you updates to give you an array of options. None is wrong and there's a billion paths to get to the same location. And this is simply the way we're doing it. So I hope that's informative for you and I hope this has helped you. I kind of wanna do a separate French homeschool update to my regular homeschool updates because I know that this is a very specific topic that fewer people are interested in than the whole of the homeschool moms. So with that, I have a, a small niche with you guys, so smaller number of you. So do reach out to me and give me the questions that you're that you want answered or would like help looking into and I'm happy to do a little bit of research and to put some information out there and if I already have the answer I'm I'm happy to give it and and to pass it to you. So as always thank you so much for watching and my best to all of you and all of the languages that you're thinking about and I'll see you next time. Bye!